Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mura here. In today's video, we will once more be talking about 5 facts that maybe you aren't aware of. And did you ever wonder who have the most damaging critical art in Street Fighter V? Under regular circumstances, that would have to be Zangief. His 720 critical art does 400 damage. Now, if we start including V-Trigger critical arts like Akuma's and Kagi's Raging Demon, both of them will be doing 400 damage as well. But they are locked behind special V-Triggers. Now, there are other V-Triggers that buff the character damage. For example, with V-Trigger 1 active, Abigail comes extremely close to breaking the 400 damage barrier, but he doesn't quite make it. On the other hand, Birdie will absolutely do it. On a V Trigger 1 activation, if you have the critical art, his critical art will do 408 damage. Now, if we start including V skill buffs with a little tab of a mic buff, Mika will actually have the most damaging critical art in Street Fighter V, clocking in at around 430, which is honestly quite surprising, but it is a realistic buff to achieve. For many projectiles in Street Fighter V, there is a difference between the projectile durability of the move and the actual number of hits the move does. One of the most famous examples is G's V Skill 1 in V Trigger 1. It actually has a large number of fireball durability, it means that it will go through a large number of fireballs, but if you notice the attack itself actually only hits once. This means that you can armor through it with armor attacks like Laura's EX Ball and actually be able to punish you. Now there are other examples, one of them is Bison EX Blast, which will go through two projectiles but actually only hits once as well, which means that it will be vulnerable to armor. Did you know that Vega is the only character in Street Fighter V? that can't be thrown out of his V-reversal. This is because it is fully invincible and only have one frame of recovery that is punishable at the end. Obviously, some characters like Shan li have really fast ones, but with enough frame advantage, say from a jump in, you can absolutely throw her out of her V-reversal. Others like Fang or Nash who have escape ones, they can also be thrown out of it, especially on startup, and on recovery. Now there are a special V reversal like Kami's who at start might seem really hard to throw but it is actually possible with enough frame data. You have to throw Kami out of the first 5 frames of her V reversal animation. It can be difficult to have such plus frames but it is actually possible. But like I said the only character that absolutely cannot be thrown out of the V reversal animation is Vega. In a previous video, we've talked about how the different charge attacks actually require different timing to charge. Something like Shan Li's Kikoket, that is her fireball, require her to charge for longer than her spinning bird kick. But did you ever wonder which attacks in Street Fighter V require the least amount of charge timing to execute? Well, this is a tie, it have to be between Mikali's Disguidance, that is his charge tackle attack, and M. Bison's Headstone. Both of these attacks require only 30 frames to charge, this is about half a second, but obviously this is very good because this means that they can charge them quickly, could be very beneficial for example after dashing it, doing a jab into medium and still be able to quickly counter hit combo into the charge attack. Did you know that Colleen have the best back dash in Street Fighter V? This is because her back dash moves her backwards faster than the other characters, and as a result of that she is able to escape attacks like Mika's standing light kick after blocking a charged drop kick from our Mika. If we take a look at Fang for example, Fang by the way have the longest backdash in Street Fighter V, he will get hit by the standing light kick if he tries to backdash. Juri also is one of the characters with the longest backdashes, yet she is still getting hit. Now if we take a look at the actual hurt boxes and hit boxes, you will see that on the third frame, Colleen's hurt box moves her way behind the central access line. Now if we compare her to Yuri, you will see that Yuri's hurt box is still within the line, right? So Colleen doesn't get hit by the standing light kick, yet Yuri does. Yes, the overall distance moved backward by Juri is longer, but Colleen gets out of the way faster. 
and this can also be applied to Ed although his backdash isn't as dramatic as Colleen but he still moves out of the way faster than normal. By frame 3 of the backdash, he would have moved more than the average character. And so if you're ever wondering why Ed is moving out of the way or able to backdash your normal after doing the 1, 2, 3, now you know why. Because he have a better backdash than the average character. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment, it helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon page and the Discord server page in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.